Penguin High. Chapter 6 on differentiation, the mixed exercise, 6S at the end, in the optimization section. Number 19, a form of higher question. So let's read this out. A yacht club is designing its new flag, there it is, to consist of a red triangle on a yellow background. Well, can't really show that, but here's the red triangle anyway. In the yellow triangle, in the yellow rectangle, AB is 8 and ED is 6, and E and F are X units from the corners as shown. Part A. Show that the area of that red triangle is given by this. Now that's the first part of it. Now that's not really anything to do with the higher. That's just a little bit of algebra on areas of triangles and rectangles. So what I'll do is I'll call these triangles, I'll give them some names, I'll call them 1, 2 and 3. And 1, 2 and 3 are all right angle triangles, so it's a simple half base times height. So for each of them, I would just work out their areas. I'll just put it in this way. So triangle 1 here. One side is 6, the other side would be 8 in by x. So that length is 8 minus x. So triangle 1 is going to be a half of 6 times 8 minus x. I'll just multiply out 3 times that. So it's going to be 24 minus 3x. Triangle 2, the one up here. Well, one side is x, the other side is going to be 6 minus x. So that must be 6 minus x there. So it's here is going to be a half of one side times the other, a half of x times 6 minus x. Well, that's going to be 3x minus a half x squared. And triangle 3 at the bottom, I can see its sizes, it's a half of 8 times x. It's a half of 8 times x, so that's 4x. So that would be the area of those three triangles. Nothing really tricky there. Area of a triangle, half base times height. OK, they're not just numbers. You have to use expressions, but that's the whole point of algebra. You do with the expressions what you would have done with the numbers. Last thing, though, the whole rectangle. So the whole rectangle ABCD would just be 8 by 6, which is 48. And this length red triangle that was left in the middle would then be given by this. So h of x would be the whole thing, 48. Take away the sum of those three triangles. So take away 24 minus 3x, 3x minus a half x squared, and 4x. So that's 48 minus, that's a bit nasty, there's only one number there, 24, well, minus 3 plus 3 goes, so plus 4x minus a half x squared. So finally you've got 48 take away 24 is 24, take away the positive, minus 4x, take away the negative, plus a half x squared. So that was the first bit. Just a little bit of algebra. Show the area of the triangles given by this expression. Now for B, it says hence find the greatest and least possible values. So it is an optimization question in that it's looking for greatest and least values. It doesn't state which it is because it's an interval type question. Well, first of all, if you're looking for an optimum value, it's like looking for a stationary point. You take that expression, which is ready to go, and you would differentiate it. So that would just be negative 4 plus multiply power, just 4x. And if there are any optimal values, so optimum value, an optimum value means that this derivative should equal zero, because if it didn't equal zero, it would just always get bigger and always get smaller. And if that was the case, if that never did ever equal zero, then that means the two optimum values in this case would be at the limits of this, which is either when x is zero, so the triangle would just be the right angle triangle, which is half of the rectangle, or when x went all the way up to six, which would be this little triangle across the way here. But it does equal zero at a certain point, because negative 4 plus x can equal zero. It can equal zero, oh, when x is 4. Which means I've got an interval style question now. So I said before, x can't just be anything here, it's a real triangle. The smallest x could be a zero. And then as you make x get bigger, the biggest x could get to would be 6, because then it's hit the other corner. So it's going to be between 0 and 6, and in this case, they can be included. So that means since it's an intervals type question, I don't have to bother with a nature table, because I don't really care whether that's a maximum or minimum. The numbers will speak for themselves. What's the value when x is 0? What's the value when x is 6? What's the value when x is 4? Whether or not it was locally a maximum or minimum, the largest of those three will be the largest, 
the smallest of those three will be the smallest. So I've just got to consider them all. So what's h of 0 first of all? Well that will be 24 minus 4 times 0 plus a half of 0 squared. A lot of writing out just to get 24. What's the value at the other extreme? What's the value at 6? Well that will be 24 minus 4 times 6 plus a half of 6 squared. So that's 24 ooh, minus 24 plus a half of 36. So that's going to be 18. So, so far my contenders are smallest area, 18, biggest area, 24. But what happens at this optimum value of 4? We'll put that in. I've got 24 minus 4 times 4 plus a half of 4 squared. So that's 24 minus the 16 plus, and that's going to be 8. So that's just like taking away 8 from that. So that's going to be 16. So there's my three answers. And then it's simply a case of deciding which is which. Hmm, which is the biggest? That's the maximum. So the question, what was the wording again? Find the greatest and least possible values of the area. So you're using greatest and least. So greatest area is 24. It says centimetres. Doesn't mention it. Just put units squared then. Units squared when x equals 0. Least area is 16. I'll just have to say unit squared when x equals 4. And that would be it. That's question 19.